Now, as you know, it seems clear from the first part of this podcast episode series that there is a dead cat on the line somewhere in this case because there are a lot of discrepancies in the testimony of Fannie Willis and her married lover, Nathan Wade, given during their sworn testimony on the witness stand in a court of law during the district attorney disqualification hearing in the Trump RICO case in the Georgia Fulton County Court. Were you ever in D.C. at the same time as Mr. Wade? I was not. On personal or business? No, me and Mr. Wade have not been to D.C. at the same time. However, uh, since Mr. Wade has been on this case, he's been to D.C. Since Mr. Wade has been on to this, this case, I've been to D.C. What has not happened is we have not been in the District of Columbia at the same time. Now, the only thing I'm not sure about with what you asked me is if I've been to D.C. personally, because i got a lot of personal friends in that area, but I know that I um, have been to D.C. Uh, I did an interview at Howard University. I went to D.C. for that. Seems like I've been to D.C. one other time. Oh, I went to D.C. for the Global Summit. Actually, yeah, those were two separate trips. My next question is based on her opening the door, and therefore I'll just ask it, and Your Honor can decide whether or not it's appropriate. When you went to D.C., did you go to the White House? I did not go to the White House. One of the other things I did was I, I did a open records for the, the White House access, and we had records that um, Ms. Willis and the mayor of Atlanta were at meeting with the vice president. Okay, and so this is the access uh, history, and this record that's shown on the screen, Green shows Fonnie Willis was a visitor with V. POTUS. I presume that's Vice President of the United States. Yes, yes, it was. And what was the date of that back in, was that February sometime of 23? February 28, 2023. In addition to analyzing even more discrepancies in the testimony, I will also analyze the judge's prior relationship, if any, with Sister Fannie and his upcoming election in the heavily Democrat. Fulton County, bearing on his political career that could have had any effect on his lukewarm decision, he rendered thereon effectively allowing Sister Fanny to make the decision that he should have made on his own. Hi there, I'm Professor Blackmore and welcome back to my channel and before I get back into the discrepancies in the testimony given by Sister Fanny and her married lover, Brother Wade. I want to explore the reason why Judge Hatchett was so interested in this mess that she just had to attend the hearing in person rather than enjoying this tasty morsel in the privacy of her home or office like the rest of us. And what I couldn't understand is why she seemed to want to hold her head down every time she saw the camera coming her way. I mean, surely she's not camera shy, and she must have known that all of this dirty laundry was definitely going to be aired on national TV. And so, it just seemed very interesting and quite odd that she had nothing else better to do with her time. Now, some of the things that we learned in the last episode was that Based on Brother Terrence Bradley's text messages and Sister Fanny's ex-best friend Robin Yearty's testimony, the romance between Sister Fanny and Brother Wade began when they met at a judicial conference in October of 2019. And we know that they knew each other very well prior to January the 1st, 2021, when Sister Fanny was formally sworn in as DA of Fulton County because Brother Wade was in charge of her transition team. And so, this all has a bearing on the reason why the Trump co-defendants think Sister Fanny should be disqualified because if the romance began prior to the time when the defendants were indicted, then the decision to employ an attorney outside of the DA's office should have been disclosed if the DA was involved in a relationship with the outside counsel that involved a financial nexus in light of the fact that she stated in the book entitled, Find Me the Votes, 
that she was in dire financial straits after the election based on the investments she made in her own political campaign that she claims she made and due to the fact that she let her house go into foreclosure based on the fact that she claims that she could no longer live in the home because of threats being made against her life. And so the thinking is that she could be obtaining kickbacks from the three quarters of a million dollars that Brother Wade had made on the case in the form of cash payments back to her, allegedly. And so this is why you see so many arguments being made around the date when the romantic relationship began. Now, the Trump co-defendants argue that the romance began before the time that Sister Fanny bestowed the benefit of the government contract on her married lover in a scheme to devise a multi-defendant, multi-indictment racketeering RICO case that would generate multi-million dollars worth of billing potential that would be at the disposal of Sister Fanny and her lover, Brother Wade, which should have been disclosed to all parties of record in the case. Realizing this conflict, you can see why Sister Fanny and Brother Wade have profusely declared in their testimony that the romantic relationship began in early 2022 after the date of the initial contract, while conveniently also making the declaration that the romance ended in the summer of 2023. And so, the next thing to explore on our timeline is the date of the initial contract. And there was a written contract uh, with Mr. Wade and the Fulton County DA's office? There was, yes. All right, let's see if we can pull that up, Senator Dolezal. Am I right that there were, I think I've reviewed your documents, mm -hmm. that there were more than one contract? Yes, there were. Right. Um, is this the first one? Yes. Yes, that's the first one. All right, so that says it shall commence November 1st of 2021 and go through October 31st of 22. Yes. Okay. So that contract began before there was even authorization to have a special grand jury and later in November of 21. Yes, it did. And so the term of Brother Wade's initial contract was from November the 1st 2021 until October the 31st, 2022. And this is why you see him and Sister Fanny testifying so profusely that their romantic relationship did not begin until early 2022 after the start date of this initial contract, which was November the 1st, 2021. And so you can see why they did everything they could to make sure that they kept their testimony straight on the issue of whether Brother Wade ever spent the night with Sister Fanny prior to November the 1st, 2021. And that is why these cell phone records reflecting that Brother Wade's cell phone traveled to Sister Fanny's hateville love nest late in the night and remained there overnight and departed in the early morning hours at which time the cell phone records also reflect calls and text messages made to Sister Fanny's phone before arriving at the Hapeville Love Nest and after leaving the Hapeville Love Nest. But even more interesting than the contract initiation date is the date when Brother Wade filed for divorce from his wife. Nathan was still married um, and he Mr. Bradley was upset because of what happened in the divorce. He was upset because they were still married, you know, the Wades were still married, and he essentially just left her after meeting Miss Willis and dropping the kids off at college. So. And Bradley was Wade's attorney in that divorce action you're talking about? Okay. Yes, I didn't know that at the time. But they were law partners. They had been, okay. yes. Okay. And I actually don't know if they, he was still his attorney when he talked to me. I don't know if he was or not. All right. Um, because at some point, Mr. Wade represented himself, and then he hired a different lawyer. So I, I didn't know anything about the divorce okay. at that time. Um, so Bradley did not like the way Wade had treated his wife. He did not. 
he but he not, represented him. He did not like okay. the way he had treated his wife. He didn't like what was happening in the divorce proceeding, yes. Okay. And, I mean, I remember specifically him saying, you know, I handle my business, things like that. Like, you know, that I, I don't leave my wife without alimony. Because this, and, and we talked about it. I mean, Miss Wade had been a stay-at-home mom for, you know, they'd been married almost 30 years. And literally it was right after they dropped their, their youngest off at college that he said, move out, you know. Um, and so... We went through, you know, I was obviously interested in, wait, what? What's, what's happening? Um, walk me through this. And so, as you can see, one day after Sister Fanny gives her lover the outside special purpose district attorney contract and puts him in charge of people in her office, he expeditiously files for divorce from his wife of over 30 years. And what I love about this love triangle more than I can say is the fact that the address of Brother Wade's marital home is located on Honeypot Way in Marietta, Georgia. But I guess that ain't none of my business. Now, the reason that the town gossip who has dropped all of this sweet Georgia tea, Brother Bradley, has now done everything he can do to remain silent is because he agreed to act as Brother Wade's attorney in the divorce proceedings when they were still on good terms when they were law partners back in November of 2021 when the divorce was originally filed. Nevertheless, sometime in 2023, Brother Bradley's law partnership relationship with Brother Wade dissolved. And so, when Brother Wade realizes that Brother Bradley is spilling all of his tea, he lets Brother Bradley know that he is invoking his attorney-client privilege and he lets Brother Bradley know that if he keeps talking, he will make a complaint against him with the state bar, which would place Brother Bradley's law license in jeopardy. And so, some might wonder why Brother Bradley would be talking to Sister Merchant at all if he was actually Brother Wade's attorney in the divorce at some point in the past. And I was not surprised by any of this because this is the type of stuff that law partners in these types of loose organizations do. In other words, if one of them needs a lawyer, they will let each other sign their name as attorney on various paperwork. So. It was my thought all along that in the beginning of the divorce, Nathan Wade was really representing himself, but Brother Bradley's name was signed on the pleadings, making it look as if he was Brother Wade's attorney in the divorce. And so, if he had never actually seen the paperwork and he had never actually appeared in court for Brother Wade on the divorce matter, then you can possibly see how two years later, when he's running his mouth with Sister Merchant, he kind of forgot that his name was on Brother Wade's divorce pleadings. And so, recently, one of the Trump co-defendants stated in court documents that a witness came forward, Miss Yeager, who is the Cobb County District Attorney, who stated that Brother Bradley told her that Brother Wade personally prepared his own divorce complaint. And so, now that Brother Wade has given his baby girl, Sister Fanny, the divorce that she was probably riding him hard to file, allegedly, now he can lavish her with exotic trips and cruises, including a cruise with his mother while he is still married to another woman. I guess so Mama Wade could give Sister Fanny her blessing or something. Allegedly. But uh, Mr. Bradley told me at that first meeting that they would meet at hotels. He told me about a lot of travel. I mean, he detailed, um, you know, he, he detailed a lot of stuff. He said that they, they traveled to Texas, they traveled to Florida, um, just, you know, a lot of different travel. He said Belize, he specifically said Belize, um, a cruise, the Bahamas, you know, things like that. And you were later able to verify that through other subpoenas or open records requests or whatever? Yes, I was. I was able to, um, I subpoenaed bank records, I subpoenaed credit card records, and then I actually subpoenaed the travel agencies that Mr. Wade used for some of those trips. Um, he used two of the cruises that they took, he used a, a travel agency. 
So there was a cruise to the Bahamas. I got through a travel agency. There was a trip to Aruba that I got through the travel agency. And then there was another cruise. Um, I think that one's to the Bahamas also that I got through a different travel agency. And then his credit cards are the ones that showed all the Belize trips. And they showed that he was buying the tickets for both himself and Miss Willis. Oh, yes. The credit card statement. So uh, because I guess he used a travel comp travel agency, his credit card statements actually had her name and seat number and all that on it. Okay. So, I mean, there was no disputing. It clear it was paid for by him on his credit cards? Yes. Oh, yes. Right. Is this clear. the document you gave us from the Capital One there? It is. Yes. And there you can see. So, Clara Bowman is Mr. Wade's mom. So, this trip, this was the cruise that happened October 31st around that date. Um, Mr. Wade paid for Miss Willis, Mr. Wade, and then his mother's plane tickets, and then also their cruise, um, their cruise receipt. I think that one was Royal Caribbean. So your summary here showing the trips, uh, we know that in late October they took a cruise to the Bahamas, and this is from his financial records he paid for this for both uh, tickets? Yes, uh, this is from his financial records, and then and I tried to be, you know, there were a lot of Ubers and things like that. I tried, I did not include things like that, yeah. that I, you know, I wasn't positive. I wanted to be under-inclusive, not over-inclusive. And then you show the trip to Aruba, another one to Bahamas, one to Belize, one to Napa Valley, California. Yes. These are all from October 22 up till May of 23. Yes. Okay. This is a document you produced to us? Yes. This summary, is this something we prepared? No, it's a summary. Okay. And so you discovered that and verified its accuracy through these uh, credit card receipts, et cetera? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. Does, do either of them deny these trips occurred? No, not at all. Uh, and so is this the the impropriety, the financial impropriety of getting financial benefit from the job that he's paying for her way on these trips with money Yes. that she's paying him and approving? This this is the, what I would call, undisputed. You know, the, the some of the other stuff it, on his credit cards, it looks like there's trips to Charlotte and Florida and other things like that. But this is what we could undisputed say was with Miss Willis. Now, since it seemed that Sister Fanny purported to put Brother Wade in charge of every aspect of her business, I mean, Brother Wade was in charge of her transition team, then Sister Fanny puts him in charge of other attorneys in her office in the Trump RICO case. And so, notwithstanding the fact that Brother Wade was still married to another woman, you can probably understand why people would be so confused by all of this. The problem is if they know that they're going to be called as witnesses, they've been subpoenaed, and they are discussing what they're going to say, we need to know that. The court needs to know that. It goes to the veracity of Mr. Willis and, excuse me, uh, uh, Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade. Thank you. Uh, now, now, Mr. Willis, uh, excuse me, Mr. Wade, when uh, you were having this discussion, did you ask her, did you ask Ms. Willis, do you have anything to support uh, these cash withdrawals? No, sir. That after the Aruba trip, you get re-upped with a new contract, correct? I signed a new contract, yes, now, sir. Was there any modifications on that contract? Did you get um, an extension on the cap that you were limited on the first one? Were there any modifications at all, Mr. Willis? Excuse me. I've done that again. I, I apologize. I, I've been called Mr. Wade, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, now, since Mr. Willis, oh, I, I mean, Brother Wade and Sister Fanny are taking trips all around the world, I bet you wouldn't believe that Sister Fanny would still have time and energy <laughs> to go on one more trip to visit her Howard University classmate and Alpha Kappa Alpha Incorporated sorority sister, or did she? I'll ask it and we'll see. Did you take trips to DC that were non-business during the time period that this case or this matter was under investigation? I'm gonna object as to relevance as it relates to the matter that we're here before your honor. Well, again, the, the question already asked is take personal or business trips. She said, but, I, but that was with Mr. Wade. Business. That was with Mr. Wade. This I asked her alone whether she took. Okay. What's the relevance? And what would be the relevance of that? I'm trying to understand whether or not we we have the ability to show a personal trip in which Mr. Wade is there at the same time. I understand her answer. 
Okay, I understand her answer, but we have documents, we have records that. Your Honor, I'm going okay. to the documents, the things. That... Well, this could be something that's maybe not part of the record yet, but is, if he is a, I think there have been other things discussed in this case, and they have evidence that Mr. Wade may have been in D.C. at the same time. If you want to ask about that exact specific date, Mr. Sadon, you can do that. I would I... reference the court that that was not asked of Mr. Wade. Uh, anything about any trips to D.C. Sure, and so that's going to limit its. Uh, merit and impact and on credibility. So, Mr. State, I'll ask the question. So, so there, I understand your testimony is you never took a trip to D.C. with Mr. Wade. That's correct. Personal or business. That's correct. Were you ever in D.C. at the same time as Mr. Wade? I was not. On personal or business? No, me and Mr. Wade have not been to D.C. at the same time. However, uh, since Mr. Wade has been on this case, he's been to D.C., since Mr. Wade has been on to this, this case, I've been to D.C. What has not happened is we have not been in the District of Columbia at the same time. Now, the only thing I'm not sure about with what you asked me is if I've been to D.C. personally, because i got a lot of personal friends in that area, but I know that I um, have been to D.C. Uh, I did an interview at Howard University. I went to D.C. for that. Seems like I've been to D.C. one other time. Oh, I went to D.C. for the Global Summit. Actually, yeah, those were two separate trips. My next question is based on her opening the door, and therefore I'll just ask it, and Your Honor can decide whether or not it's appropriate. When you went to D.C., did you go to the White House? Okay. I did not go to the White House. No, well. Apparently I'm going to get the answer anyhow. There you have it. Next question. Okay. <laughs> In the blessed name of Jesus, Sister Fanny. You are your own worst enemy, baby girl. Now, if you had just listened to the objection and let the judge, who is supposed to be in charge of the courtroom, rule on the objection before you open up your big mouth, you would be much better off. But the problem is you think you're in charge of everything. And so I'll just let the ladies and gentlemen of my courthouse jury decide if you think this testimony is true, that Sister Fanny probably didn't even have to give. One of the other things I did was I, I did a open records for the, the White House access, and we had records that um, Ms. Willis and the mayor of Atlanta were at meeting with the vice president. Okay, and so this is the access uh, history. How, how does that work? The White House keeps records of anybody that comes in and has any kind of official meeting for sure? Yes, and, I, and my understanding is it's, it's highly regulated who, who can access the White House, and so you have to apply in person, or apply ahead of time, and then they give you a, a time when you make the appointment, and they give you a time when you're allowed to be in and when you have to be out by, and they track you, and I mean, that makes sense. They don't want anybody, you know, lingering in the, in the White House, um, but but they, they keep that, and so these are, they're called WAVE records, I believe is what they're called, um, and I'm not sure what that's an acronym for, but um, they're publicly available. They're open records. And this record that's shown on the screen shows Fonnie Willis was a visitor with V. POTUS. I presume that's Vice President of the United States? Yes. Yes, and, it was. And what was the date of that back in, was that February sometime of 23? February 28, 2023. Is that before the indictment? Yes. Okay. Uh, any further explanation of why Ms. Willis was meeting with the Vice President of the United States? No. Um, I know Dexter Bonds, and I believe that's the same one that um, Mr. I think it's Dick Dickinson or Dixon, um, the, the mayor of Atlanta, was also there. Now, it is my understanding that these records are not just records of appointments made, but they are records of people who actually visited the White House. In addition, it is my understanding that Sister Fanny has admitted that she was in fact at the White House on this particular date, but she wants to claim that she did not meet with her Howard University classmate and sorority sister when she was there. But clearly, as we can see now that the judge has rendered his decision on whether Sister Fanny and Brother Wade should be disqualified from this case, does not necessarily depend on whether one or both of them lied on the witness stand. And so, I also want to take a look at some other activity that took place in the courtroom that will make a person wonder who was in charge of the courtroom, Sister Fanny or the judge. Now, prior to the time that Sister Fanny testified, 
the attorneys were going to give arguments on her motion to quash the subpoena requesting her testimony. And so, I want to take a closer look at Sister Fanny's demeanor in the courtroom and with the judge to see if we can glean any clues about her relationship with said judge. All right, Ms. Cross, you can bring everyone in. Thank you. Swear me, Your Honor. Whomever would like to. Let's go. Wait a minute. Let everyone get situated, and then we'll go back on the record. Back on the record, Deputy Scott, if you could swear in our next witness. I would, and I do apologize. Anna. District, District Attorney Fawny, F-A-N-I, last name is Willis. Um, Ms. Willis, when, how did you know to come into the courtroom right now? Because there were people I was pacing in my office, okay. and um, I heard someone yell, his testimony is done. Um, it only made sense to me that I would be your next witness, and I've been very anxious to have this conversation with you today. So I ran to the courtroom. So as soon as um, you heard that Mr. Wade was done testifying, that's when you just assumed you would be the next witness? It only makes sense. Um, did you listen to any of the testimony? I've been in my office pacing, ma'am. Okay. Um, did you listen to any of the arguments? I did hear the arguments this morning. It's ridiculous to me that the, you lied on Monday, and yet here we still are. And I did listen to that argument. Um, um, all right, so that was it, just the argument, no testimony. Right, I listened to the argument this morning morning where Adam Abadi, I thought, did an excellent job pointing out how dishonest you were with the court on Monday, and um, I'm actually surprised that the hearing continued, but since it did, here I am. Now, although this judge, Brother McAfee, was appointed to sit on the bench of this court by the Republican governor of Georgia, news reports indicate that, quote, one of his first jobs was in the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. There, he handled early stages of felony cases before he was promoted to the complex trial division. That division was led at that time by Sister Fanny, end quote. So the judge and Sister Fanny clearly know each other very well. And it's clear to me that on the day that Sister Fanny stormed into the courtroom when no one expected her to testify, Judge Brother McAfee clearly knew that Sister Fanny would be entering the courtroom to testify because he tells her associate, Miss Cross, to bring her in. And if you go back and look at the video, you will see that it was clear that the bailiff knew that she was coming because he kept going back and forth in and out of that door. And so, I am led to wonder how did the judge know that Sister Fanny would be entering the courtroom to testify if she did not tell him? which would be sort of an ex parte communication, allegedly. And once Sister Fanny enters the courtroom and sits down, she starts ordering the judge around by telling him to have her sworn in. And once the judge does bring the court to order and does go back on the record so she could be sworn in as he ordered her to do, she starts ordering the court's bailiff around. I mean, clearly, he is going to need Sister Fanny somewhere down the road in as much as he has an upcoming election in a heavily Democrat county and his opponent, 
who is a well-known civil rights attorney and radio host in that region, Brother Robert Patillo, will be the judge's opponent in the upcoming election. And as you may know, the judge allows Sister Fanny to decide whether she and her entire office would be disqualified or if her lover, Brother Wade, should be disqualified. I mean, I honestly think that the romantic relationship between Sister Fanny and Brother Wade is nowhere near over. Because if you go back and listen to her testimony, you will agree that she is in love with this man, allegedly. And so, while others may think that Sister Fanny will not step down, I actually think that she will step down because if she does not, she knows people are gonna be watching her like a cat bird to see if there are any further booty calls. And I also think she will continue to funnel other business to her lover through other contracts unrelated to the Trump RICO case. And so, ladies and gentlemen of this internet courthouse jury, I'll ask you, what do you think? In light of all of the lies, lies, lies told by Sister Fanny and Brother Wade during their testimony, allegedly, do you think the judge's prior relationship with Sister Fanny and his need for her help in his upcoming election could have had any effect on that lukewarm ruling he made on the decision of whether Sister Fanny should have been disqualified from further pursuing the Trump RICO case? And do you think Sister Fanny will recuse herself from this case so that she can be free to carry on her love affair? with Brother Wade. I mean, in all of my years of practice of law, I have never seen anything like this. And so, please let me know what you think by leaving your comments in the comments section below. And I hope you'll also give me a big thumbs up. And I hope you'll also consider donating to this video and my entire channel ministry by donating to the Professor Blackmore Dot com cash app and I hope you'll also subscribe to my YouTube channel and set your notifications so you'll be notified whenever I come back with more hot tea from the church house the courthouse and everywhere else and please also follow me on TikTok and Instagram